Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today, an actor who has seemingly worked with everyone. Most famous for Downton Abbey, he's worked all over the world with some of the biggest stars. He's about to appear in Mary Poppins, which is filming now, and he's got a brand new album out called Everything is a Joke, which is totally new and unique. And I'm delighted to say its creator, Jeremy Swift, joins us on the phone now. How are you doing? I'm not bad, Alex. How are you? It's great to talk to you, and I'll tell you why. This album's surprising. I mean, it's not what you'd expect in a sea of sort of formulaic albums. This is incredibly different, and of course, it's had a lot of hard work put into it in its creation. Congratulations on that. Thank you very much, yeah. I did wonder what people might make of it, because, you know, if you've known as a, you know, I'm an older actor now, I'm in my 50s, and, you know, people might think that it's going to be something other than it is which you know a lot of people do cover versions and things you know um but uh, this is all my own material and it's all played and recorded by me and i'm known as a kind of comedy actor as well i mean a, a, a tv producer when i told him i was making an album he said i see you sat at a hammond organ with some colorful balloons <laughs> i said well no that's not it you know it's kind of it's a bit more it's a bit darker and all that kind of thing and so uh um but thank you so much for listening to it really appreciate it the big song that they're sort of flagging up which is the single star song of course has got a feel of david bowie i know he impacted your life tell us about that uh yeah he he did hugely i mean roxy music when i was younger were the big thing for me but bowie was a bit more sing-alongable with i i found and uh yeah i wanted to write something about him and i ended up sort of writing more about the effect he had on teenagers which was really dramatic you know when i was growing up there were guys who had been skinheads only sort of a year beforehand and weren't suddenly dyeing their hair and putting eyeliner on and uh you know, who would have thunk it, really? Mm. You know, it was such a dramatic uh, uh, effect he had. Even though he's no longer with us, his music and his influence lives on. Absolutely. I mean, there were, people were putting on social media, you know, you were lucky to be alive at the same time as this guy who walked the earth. And, you know, you do have to appreciate it. Unfortunately, sometimes you don't appreciate these things until somebody's gone. But I have to say that last album that he brought out was just... I, I'd, I mean, I because nobody had an inkling that he was so ill i I'd, I'd played it something like seven or eight times over the weekend i was playing it in my car and i was just obsessed with it i just it was i thought it was the biggest comeback ever so to, to hear that he passed you know was just even more shocking yeah. i mean when michael jackson went whether you were into him or not uh he'd almost kind of faded out of the public consciousness anyway and his his better work had sort of long gone really um so so it, that was kind of shocking but sort of easier in a way i noticed in track seven i mean long live the blind that seems to have an influence of bowie as well there's a certain sound isn't there a sort of ethereal sound that you've got in this album this isn't like anything it's totally unique which is in itself wonderful how do you describe this album I know, I find it hard. I mean, I, you know, when you create a bit of music, an album, you are sort of holding up a mirror to, you know, not just your abilities, but your, your influences. And I hope that it's like a multifaceted kind of mixtape is what I'd like to think of it as. But, but you know, there, there's, a kind of, there's a kind of mood that sort of goes through it, which is, um, you know, questioning and, and it has a bit of, existential angst and uh uh and uh, you know fe a feeling of kind of uh, what's going on in the world yeah. um uh, that i think that's i think that's what i'm i've ended up putting out there you know you, you sort of discover things about yourself and i think those are the those, those are some of the elements that uh, have come up you said earlier you're not defined by music, you're defined as being a great actor. Why did you want to do this? Because this is sort of a new step for you in a different direction, isn't it? To the public it is, but I've been making music for quite a long time and I was brought up in a musical family and everybody played instruments and, you know, we all, we all played instruments. And uh, I was in bands and things. It's just been on... Uh, you know, under wraps for quite a long time because I had to make a decision whether to do acting or music, basically, when I was sort of in my 20s. 
and I couldn't keep a band together because I would just let them down, you know, by, you know, having to accept jobs that were too big or too exciting to turn down. So, yeah. um, so this was the easiest way for me to do it when I, when I wasn't working or sometimes when I was working, when I was, you know, in a trailer while the lighting was being set up, um, to do, to do stuff because everything's supportable now as well. You know, I can do things on my iPad. Um, so uh, that's why I've ended up, it's, it sounds incredibly indulgent, but it's just out of convenience really that I've ended up, um, not only writing it all and performing it, but recording it as well myself. Incredible. And I looked through your CV. The one thing that seems glaringly obvious is that you've not really done musicals, and that therefore would be an obvious place. If you're an actor that loves music, you would think you would have done every musical in the sun, but you haven't really, have you? No, I know. I just I've never really gone gone up for them, you know. And um, I know people. I've got a couple of mates who can't really sing very well who do them all the time. Um, so it's a, it's a bit strange. I mean, I'm not crazy about musicals, but, you know, I would have loved to have done, you know, do you remember the, the Blues Brothers yeah, when yeah, they yeah. did that? I would, I, was, I would have loved to have done that. Um, but bizarrely, I get to sing a little tiny bit in Mary Poppins Returns, which I wasn't, I didn't have to do that when I was uh, auditioning for it. So... Um, this is really the first musical I've been in, <laughs> yeah. um, which is going to be a, a massive, iconic film. They were filming at the weekend in London, and it looks spectacular. I mean, the scale is enormous, and they're filming in London, which is brilliant. I was there for the lo that location, but that was the first location that they've done, actually. They have been filming at Shepperton, though, um, mostly. But, uh, yeah, no, I, we went on a little walk with the director, and uh, it was just incredible what they'd done. <laughs> to just, just amazing. God, I, I, I really don't know what the budget is, but it must be huge. Mm. Are you allowed to tell us what you are in it, what you're going to do, or anything about it, or is it all under wraps? All rap? I can say is that I, I, I play because it is on IMDb. I play a character called Gooding, and he's a bit of a comedy baddie. Right. Um, but you know, it is. It's, the, the songs are great, I can say that, and it's got some amazing people in it, you know, with Meryl Streep and um, Colin Firth, Julie Walters, uh, Ben Whishaw, who I think is a genius actor, and uh, Dick Van Dyke as well. Incredible. What will he be doing, or is that under wraps? Uh, he's reprising um, his character from the bank. We most famously know you were spat in Downton Abbey. I suppose that's where people uh, went, ah, OK, this man can do the job. And as you say, you'd always got a wink in your eye with that. But you've been at it most of your career. It seems to me, like all great actors, you've had a blessed career where you've worked with some stunning actors. It must be marvellous to be A, in work, and B, at the level you're at with such great calibre of actors. Well, thank you, yeah. And I've worked with some certainly some great directors like Roman Polanski and Robert Altman. I, that was it's such a, an amazing experience. Um, but, you know, it, it, it has been incremental. It took a long... I didn't do any television until I was in my 30s. And I did a lot of... Um, I played instruments in shows a lot when I was in my 20s um, because there was a kind of <laughs> a thing going on where they would have... Um, sort of uh, actors who could play instruments and it was kind of they didn't have to pay musicians union rates mm -hmm. um so I'd, you know i'd be in shows where i'd be playing the violin quite a lot and then sort of go he went that way my lord or mm -hmm. whatever um uh, so uh, yeah I'd, so it's been quite incremental really um and, and but but great i'd you know i'd rather that than have a kind of burnout career of you know, doing loads of films and then nothing after the, after yeah. I was 28 or something like that. Yeah, it keeps coming in. Do you angle. still pinch yourself when you are opposite somebody who is a legend or more famous than you are or you find yourself on the set of Downton? Because let's face it, so few people get the opportunity to work for the National Theatre or any of the great people you've worked for and with. Yes, and no. <laughs> you saw, Because you can anticipate to a certain extent what somebody might be like because because you hear stuff about them i have to say being on set though with dick van dyke last week was just almost surreal um mm. i suppose it's the otherness of the of being american possibly as well but he's just always been there all since i was a, a, chi a tiny child so mm. uh and he's an, a legend and 
incredibly inspirational. So that was, I mean, everybody on set was going, was just saying, this is just unbelievable. I've never experienced anything like this. And this was people, th- th- these were people who done a lot. Mm. These are A-list actors saying this. What is the X factor then? I mean, we know about this show where they get people and humiliate them, make them look silly, make one a winner and then quickly forget about them. But the true X factor, what is it that the people like the dames have got that we talked about earlier, the legends have got, what do they do that others don't? I think they're they're true to themselves, I I think. I mean, Maggie has has definitely got a kind of... uh, she, I mean, she plays indignation fantastically, yeah. and she's got a a true sense of being in the moment and and a bit of danger, which is uh, you could say Judy Dench is kind of like the yin, yin to her yang almost. Uh, yeah, but she has something special of her own. She yeah. plays, she does play in the moment, but she uh, she plays questioning and she plays vulnerable mm. so strongly. So I think it's just being. It's being true to your strengths. And I guess being a great actor is looking like you're not acting. Well, so much of, <laughs> so much of acting, of course, is classically listening. Right. You know, and, and, uh, and, and stillness, you know, on film. It's, it's, it's a lot to do with that. How that do you know you're any good? Either. Is it just the fact that you're permanently in work that confirms you're good? I mean, how do you know you're not just lucky or faking it? I know that's a very good question. You know, I I I wondered that until I was about thirty, and and then uh, I thought I I had to understudy somebody at the national, and I, well, I, I think what it was, I'd never really played a lead, and I understudied somebody in a massive lead part, and then I mm-hmm. had to go on, and I realised that I could do it. You yeah. know, I could do a lead part, and um, and I was very relieved about that because I just thought. Ah, it is about pe- perception. Sometimes, sometimes there are people who get lead parts early on, and they keep getting lead parts. And and we, after a bit, you don't question it. You just think that's that person. But you know, there are they are the people who can sometimes be lucky. And so, and it, it's and it works. It works in many th- different ways. There are no rules in the business. There are people who push and don't get anywhere, and there are people who push and have talent and and get somewhere it, you know and some people who have no talent and push and, yeah. and get somewhere so it's it's a mixed bag it really is and it's not written in any of the, any of the great libraries anywhere in the world that life is fair nor is show business i suppose <laughs> you get your lot congratulations again on this new album everything's a joke is out at the end of the week the single is available on itunes as as is the album uh, star song is the single really incredible a completely unique and different album one of the most unique i think i've ever been sent and i congratulate you on that because in a sea of commercialism where everybody's singing this is the moment and uh, fly me to the moon this is something <laughs> quite extraordinary jeremy smith thank you so thank much you, for your time alex. it's been lovely talking thank to you, you alex thanks so much cheers